So we've been talking about voltaic cells, um, and we're doing our last application of electrochemistry. Uh, now it's called electrolytic cells, okay? Uh, and everything you learn about voltaic cells applies here, okay? There are some stark differences, but um, in essence, understanding the voltaic cell completely really sets you up to really understand the electrolytic cell, which some people have a little bit more problems with because there's an extra layer to this. So we learn in steps. So the first thing is to realize that in our voltaic cell, okay, we're always working toward equilibrium. This of course is 100% reactants. And these reactants oxidize or reduce. And this right here would be 100% products. Okay, so what am I after? Well. We know that the depth of the reaction is equilibrium. This is where the forward process and the reverse process is equal. So therefore, there is absolutely no net direction allowable by nature. It looks like nothing is going on. And we all know what kind of voltage we get from our battery at equilibrium. Zero volts. Remember, voltage electromotor force to push charge around is also, okay, with its positive or negative value gives us something in terms of spontaneity. Now, in a battery, in a voltaic cell, okay, and we'll keep that in blue, if we set one up properly, and lab two is about picking the best components to make the highest voltage, I'll explain in lab, but if I'm trying to create a battery, I'm trying to create the most spontaneous process. So I would be in a scenario like as far away from equilibrium as possible. Why? Because I know the farther I am away from equilibrium, the more spontaneous the reaction is, or the greater the pathway to move forward is. That's what spontaneity is, a pathway allowed by nature. Obviously at equilibrium, zero voltage for the uh, battery or voltaic or galvanic cell, there is no voltage anymore. There is no preferred pathway, okay? So as we move closer to equilibrium, as I stated before, that pathway diminishes until it gets to no overall direction is favored. Now, it needs to in introduce another concept here. We know that spontaneity is a measure of a preferred direction in nature, allowable by nature, under a set of conditions. We know that voltage, a positive voltage, and the more positive it is, the greater that direction. And we know the farther we are from equilibrium, the greater that direction, okay? But now we need to think about um, the idea that our reversibility is coming in, or uh, we need to think about the idea that um, there is something called free energy, okay? In a spontaneous process, like a battery, we know that battery is not connected to a battery. And what's happening here is that things that are spontaneous that go in one direction, okay, go, go in that direction, and they produce something called free energy for us. Free energy means that we can take that energy and do useful work with it, okay? For instance, for a process that goes in one direction, that means we don't have to keep applying any energy. We know a battery is not connected to a battery, connected to a battery. A battery is a self-sustaining um, system that provides free energy because it goes in one direction. Given a great example is if you're on a kayak and you're going with the current. If you're going with the current, you don't have to paddle. You don't have to apply any energy, it's taking you that way, okay? So it's important you realize that. In fact, in 1600, 1500, or even earlier, okay, they used the current of rivers and streams to turn these big paddles, right? These paddles on rivers, okay? So the river went this way, and it turned these big wheel paddles, okay, a certain direction. And by turning that paddle, that gave the paddle free energy to 
uh, turn some kind of uh, motion inside this building that was adjacent to the rivers, and that could have been a sawmill. That motion could be cutting wood. That motion was used to grind, um, uh, let's say, that energy was used, let's say, to grind earlier on uh, wheat into flour. So there was a lot of these old uh, water mills uh, to use the free energy of the current to do something, okay? And a lot of early factories were built in the same fashion. Now, that free energy was given to do something, all right? And we can give you another explanation as we take a piece of paper and we burn it. We know combustion takes cellulose or carbons reacted with the oxygen to make CO2 and water. We know that burning is spontaneous. Why is there a direction? Well, how do I know this direction? Well, because when we put activation energy to start the fire, do we have to keep the lighter there to keep the fire going? No, once you start it, it's self-sustaining. And of course, burning or combustion is the number one way we get free energy from things. We got here to school on a bus that was using diesel or gasoline or your car, and your homes get warmed. In fact, in Long Island, we used a Cathesis power plant in Yapang to burn fossil fuels. The burning of fossil fuels, okay, boils water. That water creates steam. That steam and pressure turns a turbine and creates electricity, okay? So it's important you realize that. But now we're talking about the fact in electrolytic cells, unlike voltaic cells, we're talking about going against, going against the pathway allowed by nature. And if free energy is created when you go with the pathway, just like getting on a kayak and it just takes you, we know that going in the reverse can happen. You can paddle and move against current, but what are you gonna to have to do? You're gonna to have to apply energy. So free energy is given off in these one-way direction processes, okay? If reversibility is possible, not all things are reversible, but if reversibility is possible, the only way to go against what the universe is allowing under those set of conditions is you have to add free energy, to paddle against the river, to walk up a hill, okay? Okay, we know boxcars roll down hills. Well, you have to get them up the hill. You have to push them up the hill, add free energy. So it's, I always give you this scenario. If I am in a spontaneous process, I can ride that energy pony. That pony will take me places. Hopefully I don't break the pony's back because I'm kind of heavy, okay? Now, if it's a non-spontaneous process, what am I doing? I'm carrying the pony, okay, because it doesn't want to move anymore. I'm applying energy. So the greatest example of non-spontaneous non process that I can give you, I think, is photosynthesis. Okay, photosynthesis works because light from the sun excites electrons in the photosystems, okay, in the thylakoids, right, of in the chloroplasts, they provide energy to produce organic molecules. Once you turn that light off or you put a plant in darkness, you stop photosynthesis. Photosynthesis only runs when there's light available. Cut the light off, no photosynthesis, okay? Unlike burning fossil fuels, we light that. So what am I talking about here today? Well, I'm talking about electrolytic cells. Electrolytic cells go in the reverse, okay? Which means we're talking about going this way. We're talking about going against the pathway allowed by nature. We're talking about redox reactions that will never ever occur this way unless we do what? Add energy. We're gonna force redox reactions that don't normally occur, but we're gonna force them to occur by giving them energy. Hey, we know a battery works and is spontaneous because it has a positive voltage, and the positive voltage increases as you go up. Okay, we know it decreases as it goes down. Well, we know something is really non-spontaneous when it gives us negative voltage. The net potential table, the net standard reduction potential table shows you negative voltages for some metal ions because they're terrible at reducing. So the value, the negative voltage is telling us that that's the energy I have to add. So we're talking about going in the reverse. Another great example, I think, and probably the best example are your phones or your devices. I'm using an iPad now to uh, videotape me, and it's moving down. But eventually, the battery's gonna die. And what do I do? I plug it in. I take free energy 
and I have to put it in the reaction to make the reactions do what? Go back to that position. That's what we're doing in a battery. We set it up here, it moves down, and then we do what? We add energy to force the reactions in reverse to get back into that position. Free energy, we have to plug it in. We're gonna use the energy of the environment. So electrolytic cells, what I'm talking about this evening or the next set of um, videos and forms are these redox reactions that require free energy to paddle against the current, okay, to walk up the hill carrying the pony, you need energy. Once you stop the energy, they don't work. So we're going in this direction. The voltages will be negative. And in order to recognize you have an electrolytic cell, electrolytic cell, is that you must have a power source. You have to have a power source. So in a diagram of electrolytic cell, electrolytic cell, you will see a battery standing there, okay? And that's the one indicator that you know you're dealing with a non-spontaneous process because that's the energy to force it to happen, okay? And that's where I'll leave it for today in terms of understanding what we're doing here. Talking about reactions that, norm that normally would occur, we're forcing them to happen. If I've got negative, 2.71 volts, that negative tells me exactly how much I have to add to force it to happen, okay? All right.